cattle feeding involves both management technique and nutrition principles. Mormons has long been associated with nutritionally balanced feedlot supplements and innovative cattle feeding programs. However, equally important in assuring feedlot performance is the management applied to the cattle, feedstuffs, and feed bump. This tape includes a discussion of a very important aspect of management in the feedlot, feed bunk management. Whether you feed 50,000 head per year or five head for home lockers, the management principles discussed can help you avoid costly problems and improve the performance of your cattle. The tape is brought to you through the efforts of Mormon Manufacturing Company and Hoffman LaRoche. What makes this pen turn a profit for a cattle feeder? Is it the new technology and the products that are available? The advances in applied nutrition? The ionophores that enable cattle to utilize more dietary energy and protein? The anabolic implants that enhance growth? The antimicrobials that prevent or treat disease? The computers that balance diets, project closeouts, and provide accurate detailed records? Sure, they all help, but the main component the single most important one that can extract the full value from all these things is the person who manages the feed bunk. Bunk management transforms the diet and management techniques that look right on paper into a diet that pays off. Bunk management matches that diet to the changing environmental conditions and needs of the cattle every day during the feeding period. Bunk management simply means matching the amount of feed delivered to the amount of feed cattle can handle. Sounds simple. Most of the time, it's not. It's something that comes with experience. That's why people who know how to do it well are worth their weight in gold. No matter how experienced you are, it'll pay to hone your bunk reading skills and record system so you can turn more of a profit with the cattle in each pen. There are really three basic things to remember. These are behind almost everything you do in bunk management. The first is that the fermentation process in cattle, the heart of their digestive process, favors a steady state. In cattle, digestion requires that bacteria and protozoa in the rumen produce a balance of nutritive substances used for growth. These organisms in the digestive tract need a constant environment in order to function properly. If they are disrupted by major changes, digestive problems result. In order to maintain this steady state, it's crucial to maintain consistent feed intake. Fluctuations in the amount of feed offered, the ration quality, or the feeding schedule cost money and can at worst be disastrous. That's an interesting thought given the fact that the very nature of the feedlot system is to keep increasing the amount fed. But these things, steady state and increases, can go together if you work it right. The second thing to remember is that forage is needed to help us manage our bunks. Forage helps fill cattle, prevent overconsumption, and stabilize rumen fermentation. When there is less forage in the diet, as there is in today's high energy rations, the bunk manager has to manage these problems more closely. Bunk management means increasing the amount consumed in a way that maintains the steady state and prevents overconsumption, which produces the roller coaster effect and digestive upsets we've all seen. The roller coaster effect that can really set cattle back as they fall off feed rapidly after eating too much or having their ration changed too drastically. As a bunk manager, you need to know the difference between how much cattle want to eat and how much they can handle. The third thing to keep in mind is that most of the time, the reaction to something you did at the bunk does not occur immediately. The effects of overfeeding often show up two or three days later. To be
be a really successful feeder, you've got to be able to interpret what you are seeing in the bunk today with what happened several days ago. The only way you can do that is to keep good records. And maybe even more importantly, make use of those records when you see something happening or plan to change feed in a particular pen. If you understand these three things, you'll see how important it is to match the amount of feed cattle can safely consume with what's in front of them, and do it day in and day out. Here's a real-life example of what the difference in feeding techniques can mean. Keeping feed in front of cattle, keeping the bunks full all the time, versus matching feed deliveries to cattle appetite. In this study, a group of similar cattle were split into two different lots. In one yard, A, they simply kept the bunks full with feed in front of the animals all the time. In the other, B, they did what you should do, match the feed delivered to appetite on a daily basis. Note that on some days, the cattle were not fed because there was an oversupply from previous feedings. Here's the difference in performance from these two methods. As you can see, the total amount of feed consumed was similar for both groups. But average daily gain and pounds of feed per pound of gain are dramatically different. You can easily see how expensive it was not to match the feed required to the appetite of the cattle. Remember, cattle in both yards received approximately the same amount of feed. Why is there such a big difference in performance? Simply because in lot A, the amount of feed isn't matched to how much the cattle need at a particular time. The cattle in yard A were probably eating too much. Their digestive system was not operating in a steady state. If you looked at the intake for the pen over time, you'd see the typical roller coaster effect. The valleys more than make up for the peaks, so overall performance suffers. This wastes speed and can cause digestive upset. Both of these can increase the amount of feed required for unit gain and subsequently increase the cost of gain. Here's another look at the same subject, the need for a steady state. Here, cattle were split into three groups. One group received a constant amount of feed per day. For another, the amount of feed offered was purposefully varied by 10% each day. And for the third, the amount was varied 10% each week. During the first 28 days, varying the daily feed intake by 10% decreased daily gain compared to the group receiving a constant amount or those having feed varied 10% weekly. This same effect was seen over the entire 84-day trial lower daily gain in the group that had the most frequent variation in feed offered. Also note that the feed to gain ratio suffered as well. Remember, consistency is the key. It's your job to keep intake steady. In a minute, we'll talk more about how to do it. But now, let's take a quick look at how much it's worth. All other things being equal, if you can increase the dry matter intake consumed by 10%, you can increase return by $11.15 per head. That's based on these prices. If your management is lacking and your cattle consume 10% less than they are capable of consuming, profit will be reduced by $15.25 per head. Intake affects feed efficiency and average daily gain, and these in turn can affect your bottom line. Feed efficiency is even more important. Everything else being equal, a 10% drop in feed to gain ratio increases profit by $19.33 a head. On the other hand, a 10% higher feed to gain ratio decreases profits by $26.33 a head. Improved feed-to-gain ratios are one of the things that make Iona 4 so popular. There's a big payback from even small improvements in feed efficiency. The need to maximize feed intake and efficiency have also made the bunk manager's job more critical. Feed efficiency
efficiency costs have pushed us to increasingly higher concentrate diets. To crank up the energy density of our diets, we've replaced forage with grain. Less fiber from less forage means less rumination and in turn less saliva. This lowers the pH in the rumen and can lead to acidosis and other digestive problems, even death. A 1% incidence of sudden death in the feedlot after 60 days on feed costs 7 to $8 a head, averaged out over every animal in the pen. The cost of chronic or subacute acidosis is even worse. It can easily cause the 10% increase in feed to gain ratio that can cost you $26 a head. Does it happen? Yes. If you look at this chart, it shows you where and when most of the deaths in the feedlot occur. They don't occur in the sick pen. They occur out in the lot. So how do you go about getting the most feed into your cattle while preventing these metabolic disorders and achieving the best possible closeouts and profitability? Let's take a look at a few examples that pull most of what we've been talking about together. They're not every possible example you'll see in your feed yard but they do give you lots of food for thought. Here's the first situation to think about. You observe the bunk is completely empty. How much feed do you unload here? Since the bunk is empty, obviously you should feed a little more than you fed yesterday. But how much? Based on what you remember about what you did yesterday, which was feed 3,500 pounds in this pen, you unload 3,750 pounds today. Not a terribly big increase. The same thing happens in the next pen. But in the third pen, you find the bunk is half full of feed. You don't put any feed in that bunk. Did you do the right thing? Let's see. The next day, the first and second pens are half full of feed, and the third pen is empty. Logically, you'd repeat the process you did the day before, putting a little more feed in the third pen and not putting any in the first and second. But that logic is already starting to get you in trouble because you're starting the up and down process that costs money by upsetting digestion. What's going on here? How can you get it under control? Let's look at a few possibilities. Why did the cattle in the first two pens back off feed on the second day? Well, if you'll recall, you increased them 250 pounds the day before. Had they also been increased 250 pounds the day before that? If so, you've increased the amount in the bunk by 500 pounds in two days. That's 15% in two days. These cattle have been overfed. You're close to, if not already in, this part of the roller coaster. The point here is clear. You've got to have an accurate record of each bunk each day for the last week. Do not guess. If you see a change, you'll know what may have caused it. You won't overreact to empty bunks or half-full bunks, and your feeding will be consistent. Consistent feeding means consistent consumption, which in turn keeps us off this roller coaster and in a steady state condition. Likewise, in the third bunk where you saw feed left on the first day, it may have been because you increased the feed the day before. If you did and you know it, you can make adjustments or not make them accordingly. Feed records or bunk sheets are an essential tool in helping you keep track of what you're doing. You need to have quick and easy access to at least four days of feeding records with you when you determine the feed being offered. You can use a simple system. One system is to score a bunk from zero to four. This tells you how much feed was in the bunk before feeding on each day. Zero, no feed remaining in bunk. One half, scattered feed present most of bottom of bunk exposed. One, thin uniform layer of feed across bottom of bunk, typically about one kernel deep. Two, 25 to 50% of previous feed remaining. 
3. Crown of feed thoroughly disturbed, more than 50% of feed remaining. 4. Feed virtually untouched, crown of feed still noticeable. Using that system, let's take a look at a couple of more possibilities about our bunk situation. If you delivered 3,750 pounds of feed yesterday, and the bunk score today is a 2, the cattle probably consumed 2,500 pounds of feed. So you've got 1,250 pounds of feed in the bunk. You need to cut back today's delivery. If you cut it back to 2,500 pounds, this, added to the 1,250 pounds still in the bunk, keeps the total feed available at 3,750 pounds. That's what you've been feeding them. But, if the steers only consumed 2,500 pounds yesterday, they will probably not eat 3,750 pounds today. You need to reduce today's delivery to 1,500 pounds for a total of 2,750 pounds and then start working them back up to full feed. You need to do that kind of quick math whenever you make or see a change at the bunk. The important thing to remember is that dry matter feed intake does not equal feed delivered if there is feed available from the previous feeding. Make one change at a time in the ration. If you're going to a higher energy ration, don't increase the amount at the same time, and vice versa. This is another way you can lessen the impact of changes on the cattle. And if they back off, it will help you to figure out why they did it. Remember, the amount that you put in the bunk will not tell you how much the cattle are actually eating. You need to combine that with a bunk score to truly track intake. And you've got to make the necessary adjustments to either bring the cattle back up on feed at the right pace or adjust the feed downward for a short period if you've had some temporary setback in consumption. And make the smallest changes possible while still making the necessary amount of correction. That's the part that's so critical about bunk management. If you work at it, you'll maintain a constant feed supply, which is so important to continue that steady state digestion process. Obviously, you just can't look at the bunk when you're making a feed call. You also need to look at the cattle. If the bunk is empty, do the cattle look like they're hungry or do they look content? If they look content, wait for a second or a third day of empty bunks before increasing the feed delivery. They may be on just the right amount of feed. There's a fine line between maximum tolerable intake and overfeeding. A cool night or a small weather front can cause steers to empty a bunk that normally would have some feed left in it. In this case, they aren't capable of consuming more feed two or three days running. Increasing the amount of feed delivered may only cause them to back off feed after a day or two. If you think they are truly hungry, Increase the feed delivery by not more than 5%. That's only one pound of feed for animals consuming 20 pounds of dry matter a day. Hold it there for two or three days to find out if they can actually handle the feed. If they do handle it, increase the feed delivered again. And again, wait two or three days before making another change, even if you continue to see empty bunks. Remember, it takes a day or two, or sometimes three, for changes in what you feed to show up in the cattle. We mentioned this earlier, but it's important. We all know how important it is to get maximum dry matter intake. Some feeders worry that each day the bunk is empty is lost gain. If bunks are empty all the time, that's true. However, remember that increases in dry matter intake, if they are followed by a few days of lower intake, don't pay off. The peak that is missed by occasionally allowing cattle to empty a bunk does not hurt overall dry matter intake as much as the valleys that follow overfeeding. As you're keeping an eye on the bunk, the feed wagon, and the cattle, also notice what's going on in the rest of the environment. The day that's already scorching at 6 a.m. means cattle won't eat that much that day. Since 
hot weather causes high moisture feeds to go bad rapidly, on those days, it might be a good idea to cut back a little in advance or feed more frequently. Or, if you see big decreases in feed consumption with no apparent cause, check the water tanks. Remember, take time to look around and detect what the problem is before you make your feed call. Managing the bunk for the most profit is a real art. This video certainly doesn't cover all of what you've got to know, but keep in mind these basics. Feed delivered doesn't equal dry matter intake. The need for a steady state in cattle digestion, the inability of cattle to balance their feed intake, the need for forage to help prevent overconsumption and stabilize rumen fermentation, and the delayed reaction to what happens at the bunk. If you do, and you factor these into your own experience, you'll come out way ahead in the tough business of feeding cattle. Also, it's important to feed an ionophore. An ionophore will improve performance, but it can't prevent an unsteady state of digestion in cattle. Only you can do that through effective management. This video was prepared by Hoffman LaRoche Incorporated, manufacturer of Bulbatech, the ionophore that both increases rate of weight gain and improves feed efficiency in cattle fed in confinement for slaughter. In addition, Bulbatech is also approved to control coccidiosis in cattle up to 800 pounds body weight. For more information, contact your feed supplier or call 1-800-526-0189.